Hello everyone and welcome to the Four Teachers YouTube channel. I've got so many different videos that I want to make at the moment to try and help any parents or teachers with apps and websites and resources. I live in Hong Kong at the moment, which means that I have been practicing this style of learning for quite a while now. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through the basics of adding assignments on Seesaw and checking how students have responded to the assignments that you've posted. Please make sure you are subscribed to Four Teachers because I'm going to be posting lots of different tips and tricks videos over the next couple of weeks. I really hope I can help you out with this introduction to Seesaw video today. Okay, so I'm going to start showing you Seesaw as if you haven't used Seesaw before. I know there's a lot of people watching that have used it, so I'll get into a few more kind of technical things around assignments and ways that you can use it for home learning in a minute, but I'm just going to give you a really quick overview. I have Seesaw, like I use it with my school, my school buy into Seesaw. If you don't buy into the program and you don't unlock the full version, then your screen might look different to mine. It's gonna look different if you use a different device. It's gonna look different depending on how you're accessing it. But this is me on my laptop. Um, it looks completely different on my phone. I can maybe show you that in a future video. But right now I have like my class screen. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do on here. I have my journal, which is kind of like the live stream of my classwork. So when a student posts, it goes straight into the journal. I have activities that I can assign to my students um, for them to complete. And it lets me know when they've finished it, when they've submit uh, an activity, I can check it. I have an inbox for communication. Our school has got Seesaw connected with parents, so I can choose to contact parents, I can choose to contact students, I can post an announcement or like a status so that everyone can uh, see what I've got to say as well, so that's really useful. I'm not going to go into things like skills today because honestly I'm not 100% sure on it yet and um, maybe it's not 100% necessary if we're just concentrating on getting Seesaw set up and posting assignments to help with home learning. What I wouldn't do, obviously, is create a new class because I already have one. But if you are in the position where you're creating a new class, you need to click over at the top here um, where your name will be and you can click to create a new class. I already have one assigned, but you can create one. Um, and then you can choose to import a list from your Google Classroom if you are connected in that way, or you can choose to name your own class and your grade level. So if I was to gonna call my class example class, how exciting. Um, and then you can start adding things for your class as well as adding assignments for your students. So when you click add, you can post student work, um, assign activity or send announcement. Now it's more likely that your students are going to be posting their own work than you are going to be posting it for them, given that you're not with them physically. Sometimes in class, I will post student work by taking a picture and posting it of a child's work for them. Especially if the child is younger, this can be a really useful way to help students to get their work uploaded. However, given that I'm not with my students currently, I can't help them with that. Most of what I've been doing is assigning activities. So if I was to click on assign activity, then I can choose some different assignments. And these are things that I've been making, um, things that other teachers in my school have been making. Here is an example of a template that I have assigned to my students. So I've given them this template. Key question, how do we tell the time? What activity are you sharing? What time does it start and end? And students can edit this template. So when you assign an activity, you can say, um, so I'm gonna give it to my example class now assign it and then my students can now after they sign in they can respond and I can view it in my example class. What I thought might be easier is for me to show you the example from the class that I actually have in real life and how they have responded to the task. So if you look here once the students have sent the task in you can check their responses. I can see here that 22 students have responded to the task and I'm still waiting for seven of my students to respond. So if I click on that, it will come up with all the different children and all the responses that they have provided for me. And as you can see, the students have responded in a variety of different ways. Some of them have added text boxes over the top. Some of them have done writing. It's quite nice because Seesaw gives the opportunity for students to kind of respond in their own way. And they can add drawings, they can add notes, they can add text box. Um, it's just really nice to be able to give them that freedom as well. So if I was to choose a um, random one, I'm going to choose this one, open it up so you can have a look. You can see that um, this student has decided to share 
how long it took for her to do her Nintendo Switch exercise game. It starts at four, it ends at five, and it lasts for one hour. And she's shown that there using this clock. So anything that you post in as a seesaw activity, your students can respond and they can type on it and they can add notes to it. I don't think you need to print these. You can just quickly add your notes on top. Here is a different assignment that I posted for my students. So as you can see on here, I have posted an assignment asking my students to uh, add a different feature to their writing and then type the paragraph giving an example of the changes that they made. And I can see here that my student has added more action to make the story more vivid and has typed an example of how they have chosen to do that as well. So you can post really simple activities on Seesaw that require the students to respond. And gathering the information about who has responded and who has not is really simple because it will come up and it will tell you how many responses you've had and how many have not responded. So it's kind of easier than scrolling through all of the different work and ticking and making a list. And these are all things that I have done because um, I've been figuring this out for a few weeks. But if you attach a template, it can be a lot easier to gather the responses from uh, the children in your class as well. So I will be keeping an eye on this one. I only assigned it today. And I will hopefully be seeing more responses from my students popping up throughout the day, giving me the opportunity to give some feedback. Um, what I will probably do now is show you an example of how to give feedback to the assignments because there's a few different ways that you can do this. So I can see that this student has added some action to their story to make it more imaginative. They've also added some speech, which I think is really good. Um, I'm having a read through now and I can see that they've not got many adjectives to describe and they have mentioned the grass a couple of times and I feel like that was a really good opportunity to have some description uh, inside the text. So I might give that child some feedback. First thing I might do is add a like. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, my students just really like receiving a little love heart and a like on their work and I think it's such a simple action and it shows that you've acknowledged the work so I'd recommend just clicking that to let them know that you've seen it. Um, adding a comment is nice and easy so I can type and I can say I really like your use of a speech and how you have added action to your text. I might say something like next time consider how you might describe the graphs. Can you name two adjectives that might be used to describe it? And I can click post and my student will get that sent to them. As far as I'm aware, they'll get it sent to them as an email depending on the settings they have on their seesaw. So they'll immediately get the feedback. Something else that I've been using quite a lot recently is I will click comment and then this little button, which is like an audio record. That's amazing because I can just record my response to the student instead of having to type it out. Um, especially good if I feel as though I've had a bit too much screen time that day, which I know is a really important thing for us at the moment. You can just have it on your phone and you can just speak uh, you know, well done, I really like your use of action. Next time, consider adding some adjectives and then post. And I think you can get a lot more said in 30 seconds than you can type in 30 seconds in theory. So that's another really nice thing that you can use. If you go on to assign activity, there are also, if you click on community, there are so many different activities that you can choose from that other teachers have made and you can edit them. If you type in um, shape and search, then you will see there are lots of different shape activities that have been made by different teachers and they have made it possible for you to use them uh, as templates. Uh, you could assign this to your students. You just click on and then you click the assign button and then your students will have that activity inside their own Seesaw portfolio. Um, they can edit this template. This is the activity that they're going to have. Just click assign, choose your class. That's my example class that I made before and I can assign it to the students in there. I can view the activity, I can see who has responded to it. Um, it's really useful, especially when there are so many different things that have already been made uh, that are available for you to use for different year groups as well. So you can select different year groups, third. I'm, I'm not sure how it translates for the country that you're in, but there's tons of amazing activities on there that you can uh, use and try. I'm going to continue making videos. I'm going to continue posting things about Seesaw and about how to use it as a teacher and as a parent as well. I hope this has been helpful. Subscribe to 4Teachers and I will speak to you soon. Yeah.